Welcome to the show, welcome to the show. Here to give you knowledge that you didn't know. Put you on some game, now you got a buzz. You are now listening to Canna Bruv. Boom. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. We're going to start off with the boom. All right. So look, picture this premium quality cannabis meets the cool vibes of Eric Melzer's R&D cultivation magic and David's illustrious sales and operations mastery. I should say magistry for some reason (laughs) in East Tennessee. So let's kick off by discovering how Flow Gardens is bringing health happiness, and a whole lot of swag to the cannabis scene. Guys, right off back, what is it that you want the people to remember Flow Gardens for? Um, I'd say I want to be remembered for, or not me, but I want them to remember Flow Gardens as one of the companies that paved the way for cannabis prohibition uh, to be ended. Mm, I like that. David, what would you say? Would you agree with, with Eric's... Uh take or what yeah i would say that and the how-to would be by merging the two you know quote sides of marijuana and hemp when they're essentially the same thing so Mm. just eradicate that like false yeah analogy is out there and gentlemen just for the audience just in case they're not familiar where are you guys from and then what is the market like out there for you all so we are based out of knoxville tennessee and uh as you know, or most people probably know, Tennessee is still in a legal state as far as marijuana goes. So yeah. we're in the hemp industry. We've been navigating that now for the last six years. I know here in, in Texas, Delta 8 was, it was on, it was legal, illegal, back and forth constantly. What's Tennessee stance when it comes to Delta 8? Last July, they actually uh, approved a bill to make it a legitimate product by putting a 6% tax on it Okay. and um, putting a bunch of regulations around it, like under 21 or over 21, childproof packaging, that kind of stuff. So as as it is now, uh, it's a legitimate product here in Tennessee. That has to feel pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was there like, did you guys like feel like a cultural change when that happened? You know, uh, was that, was it a big difference as far as like the conversations that you're having when you're out at the bar or when you're like, you know, picking up a pizza or something like that? Did you, did, did people really talk about it or was it just for like the industry insiders type thing? Yeah, I think it was more just the insiders. The biggest thing we talked about was now who do we collect tax from? <laughs> we had right. figured that out. It took right. a couple months to figure out, was it all the states or was it just Tennessee? Mm-hmm. So that was the one thing we were talking about. But um, no, it was just business as usual for us. Business okay. as usual. What's your stance on Delta 8? Um, personally, uh, I'm not a big fan of Delta 8. Uh, that's just my preference. I've tried it and didn't enjoy the effect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I'm an old school head so you know i like the real thing when i when i first tried delta eight it felt like i just felt heavy man i felt like i felt heavy yeah. and i thought i had a i got a sunburn on my back because my back felt like static <laughs> <laughs> i was like it hits, yo it hits really hard and then for some reason it gave me a hangover the next day which i wasn't a fan what? Of. yeah <laughs> yeah that's that high, you know, that high over effect yeah. I'm always talking exactly. about. Yeah. yeah, it's like a high over. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, like man, I really, something hit me. Like I got hit with a Matt truck last night. <laughs> exactly. You know, <laughs> like it, it is that feeling. Yeah. That's for sure. I've seen it a little bit different when it comes to some of the like the uh, different consumables. So like when we talk about like the uh, the seltzers or the yeah. drinks and yeah, the sodas yeah. and stuff like that that we've had. Some of them, uh, some of the companies have like the D8 and they have the D9 options. And right. the, the D8. It didn't give me what it gave me from like trying to like consume it via like smokables and stuff. So, right, right. Yeah, so that's just something that I noticed, you know. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to get your your what's your thought on it because I know some people have some people are like hell yeah D eight, you know that's mm-hmm. that's the new wave, and then some people are just like heck no nah, man get that keep that stuff away from me man I <laughs> I, <laughs> I I just I want to stick to my my regular hemp and or. Uh, marijuana. One thing that's been plaguing 
like uh, all of our conversations lately mm-hmm. when we're moving about and we're going to the different like local dispensaries and smoke mm-hmm. shops and stuff in like the DFW area in Texas is the conversation around THCA. You know, first it was a it was a lot of good good PR around it. Like you know, people were just mm-hmm. happy about this idea. Like, wait a minute, so it tests like this, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then when you light it up and you know or heat it up <laughs> or whatever, then it feels like this. Yeah, it was like. We finally broke the code, everybody. You know, right, like, right. like we finally exactly. broke. The- so that was the first initial thing, and then we started having some other type of uh, conversations, and that was around, um, or that was around people's like skepticism, mm-hmm. you know, around uh, THCA. Flow Gardens, we need y'all to spill all the tea and help us educate the masses on THCA's wellness benefits with some serious cannabis enlightenment. So you can you enlighten the people about THCA from your perspective and your experience and let them know what it's about. About three years ago, um, we were growing different plants and I was growing this one plant called Banana Mac. It turned out to be an anomaly. Banana Mac bred by a, a breeder called Capulator out in LA and it was a marijuana strain. And um, when I started smoking it before I tested it, it felt good, but it didn't really get me blasted like it should and Mm -hmm. uh tested the thing out and it came out like 12 percent cbd and five and a half percent thca and that kind of was the light bulb for me Mm. because at the time delta eight was really big and i was like if this delta eight gets me this high then why the hell can't we sell thca (laughs) right because you know it's still legal under the farm bill and so that was kind of the light bulb and that's kind of where it started I mean, it's just for the benefits, it's, it's the real thing. So it's, it's plant medicine, you know, it's way better than any of the synthetics that they're putting out. So it makes me happy to see like the, all the HHCs and the Delta Mm -hmm. 10s and all that stuff kind of went to the wayside as soon as everybody started learning about THCA. And and yeah, that's, that's true. We did right before we were hearing a lot about like HHC and, and man, that stuff will, that synthetic stuff will really get you messed up, man. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't mean in a good way. I mean, some people that had some really, uh, some scary encounters, you know, on the uh, <laughs> on the HHC and all that stuff. On the topic of THC, when that topic comes up, yeah, some people are like, yeah, that's it's it's the greatest thing ever. This is the game changer in the industry. It's the step right before legalization. And then you have some people like. No nah, man, that that's synthetic. It's 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 sprayed on terps on on flower and and all that. So, what what's your thought on that? When when people come across and they and they have such uh, a strong stance, specifically on like it being like sprayed on terps and stuff. Um, yeah, as far as that goes, they're just uneducated. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure there are people that grow shitty weed that spray terps on it i mean that's probably in the marijuana market as well Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but thc as a whole is just uh the acid form of delta 9 that grows in the plant like delta 9 thc that gets you high doesn't grow in the plant Mm -hmm. and you might get a trace amount around harvest time uh, but it starts to convert as the plant dries over time and then uh, oxygen and then heat will convert it completely to Delta 9. Right. Okay. okay. Man, you heard the man here. So, man, y'all stop with all the cap, man. Yeah. They, you know, a lot of people have been been really saying, like, oh, man, that's what everybody is doing. And yeah. I'm like, that don't sound right. You know, because, like, it's, it's too many people stamping this right now. Right. Like, too many people stamping THCA. So, you've heard it from a cannabis wizard himself, you right. know. Uh, right. So, that, that part is important. So, I, I need some help from some veterans in the business game. You know, can you guys... Give us your top three behind the scenes business concerns for cannabis cultivators. The number one would be compliance, you know, making sure you cross all your T's, dot mm-hmm. all your I's. Uh, number two would be having your finger on the industry and, and kind of looking forward as to what's the next thing, uh, whether that be a strain or a product. Um, those are two of the biggest concerns that I can think of. Mm. Okay. We got one more to add to anything that kind of just ticks you off, David, about like, hey, we always got to be concerned about this one thing. Like this kills me every, either every day or every month. We're looking back in to see if this is correct. Yeah, I think uh, 
this hits so many different areas, whether it's compliance, regulations, local, national, by state, it's just politicians. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's that's obviously not in my control, but right. you know, the regulatory market changing as frequently as it is right now um, does does not mesh well with trying to run and operate a business. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. And it's always about the dollar like that doesn't con- that they're not concerned with. You know, it's like they haven't been concerned about cannabis an entire time. But then, you know, when they realize, OK, well, it's time to go make some good money and tax them high. <laughs> you know, right. we can throw some high taxes on them now and it makes sense for the next election. Then let's go ahead and uh, let's get interested in cannabis now. Yeah. You know, yeah, I was yeah. definitely I was definitely expecting to hear <laughs> taxes because <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh something y'all might not know about us i don't know if you know how far you've done your research but by day we do a whole superman clark kent type thing so this right here is the superman version uh <laughs> clark kent the side of that is uh by day we actually co-own uh harvest day of financial consultants uh that's i mean that's <laughs> Right before this, I was in a meeting talking about tax planning. And it's like, <laughs> all right, now let me take my ripped shirt off, throw the cameras on, and uh, all right, let's and that, and that flow garden snap back. Hey, that yeah, thing, yeah, that, that, that thing, thing look fire, fresh, boy. You, you, yeah, you got that in there. Yeah, we go, yeah. <laughs> you see that? You have hey. to make sure that we roll that B roll, wow. roll the B roll real quick <laughs> with the sticker on it still, just so they know. That's authentic. I love it. <laughs> Appreciate you guys for the care package too, yeah, man. Yeah, but man, I wanted to make sure everybody understood too. We're not just you know talking to the guys and just taking their word for it. They were like, no, we're really about it. Mm-hmm. So like, we're gonna send you a care package. They sent out the care package. It had e- even more cooler things than than just you know keeping my my hand warm while I'm drinking a cold bottle of water, but also. Man, it had some great products in there as well. Yep. You know, we talked while we were talking about D9, you know, some great D9 products yep. and some pre-rolls and stuff. One was uh the, the mac and cheese. Uh that that was that was cool. So the names alone got me. I was like, yo, we gotta light this thing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 had a whole watch party and we're like, all right, bust out the products. <laughs> <laughs> so when it when it comes to the product, and you know, of course. As Jarrell just said, we got a chance to experience your product. But for those that are interested in experiencing your product and as you begin to grow, how do you utilize your team to keep your product consistent, reliable, and as iconic as you've come to be? Honestly, it hadn't been easy, you know, scaling mm-hmm. this thing up mm-hmm. and still keeping the quality was probably one of the hardest parts. But yeah. For example, our packaging room, the ladies in there probably hate me, but I keep it between <laughs> 65 and 70 degrees year round, yeah. and, uh, mm. just like the drying room. So the packaging room pre- pretty much replicates. It's got uh, anywhere from 50 to 55% humidity year round. Okay. So by doing that, and then we pack orders to ship, so they're getting the product like like it was cured out, not too dry, not too wet, you know, mm-hmm. as perfect as we can get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're never they're never uh too upset with you, I guess, if if they're sticking around. Get you got them some long tenured employees in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we've got an incredible team over at Flow for sure. Okay. I'm very proud of. They just got they just have to wear jackets in the packaging room year round. <laughs> That's it. Hey, you at least you give them branded jackets, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. right. And hoodies. <laughs> and hoodies. There you go. So they, they they get they get the merch too. So exactly. Shot, so good for them. No, that's something that we always talk about, though, is just like the importance of team, as everybody can probably see when Carter's c- comes in to fix technical issues and stuff like that. That's our producer. We have to make sure that things run smoothly. Mm-hmm. Um, so team is a very important part of business. Like, I don't know how you do it, you know, without being what's that? What's the character on Mortal Kombat that has like six hands? Come on, Goro. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> he got four hands, y'all. Don't, don't, don't beat four him up. Sits? Yeah, yeah, whatever, man. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a gamer. I'm too busy with the business, man. Right. I know you guys can definitely uh, relate on, on that end. Uh, what would be like a secret nug that you can drop for the business owners that's tuning into the Cannabis Podcast? I've, that's one of the things I looked for in my first business is like, where, where can, where's that silver bullet? Where's the... You know, it's the special sauce. Where, where's all that? How can I crack the code? And I honestly, what I've experienced across, you know, dozens of businesses, whether I've been involved in them or invested in them, it's it's just brick by brick. 
Mm -hmm. It's not complicated. Don't overcomplicate it. Just mm. know your core business and good things will happen. Yeah. You know, you can't get too out there with too many creative ideas. You're not going to be able to implement them all. And you can't be too structured and try and do things um, w without some creativity. So right. just finding the balance and everything you do and do it brick by brick, unless you're some kind of like Zuckerberg, Facebook, impeccable timing, then <laughs> you know, those, those exponential growth stories, they're, they're fables. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and so, I mean, if the market calls for us to have, you know, a million percent growth, we're going to look like geniuses, but you know, if they change the regs tomorrow negatively, you know, we may not look so great to other people looking at us, you know, mm -hmm. on, on, from a PNL perspective. So, Mm -hmm. Just keep it simple, stupid. Do the kiss principle. <laughs> right. Kim I say Kimple. Keep, keep, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I failed at that tons and tons of times, guys. That's why I'm that's why I'm saying but it like that. We can tell. Yeah, for we real. can no, not that we can tell that you, you failed, but <laughs> we can <laughs> Corey, Corey like Mills after everybody. David. Right, right, right. I'm like, oh, he's been through some hard times. No. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of misconceptions mm -hmm. out there, you know? Well, yeah, because there's a lot of TikTok videos and right. there's a lot of, uh, <laughs> right. you know, like you'd be like, all right, yep, I'm ready. Take it. All right. Take an LLC. All right. right. Uh, you know, you know, get rid of my mom, get the life insurance. Right. Off of <laughs> how, how to grow a seven figure, uh, uh, cultivation in 90 days type stuff. <laughs> so, so what you, so what you want to do, right. Just take all the seeds you ever get, right. You just want to throw them into the ground. Right. <laughs> right. and, and every day at six o'clock you just get to water and you water for exactly four minutes and 20 seconds and you gotta see a whole new world at 7 a.m every day if you, you can't miss a day <laughs> for, for more follow the link below. Follow, follow the link <laughs> so yeah we've seen it all man that's why we, we that's why we do this show man and we invite you know uh guys like like you who have actually done the work and continue mm -hmm. to do the work you know guys that are still you know consulting with their their employees you know in real time and really dealing with the issues of the demand of the market so yeah man we we appreciate you guys and again appreciate you guys for uh coming on um Earlier, we were talking about, you know, tax. Yeah. You know, we always get to talking about tax because actually, I never give away the time that we're recording, but I must say it's now tax season. Tax season, baby. It's tax season, baby. It's now tax season and uh, everybody's going to be concerned now, mm -hmm. though they should be concerned throughout the entire year if you're running a business. I have to ask guys with your expertise, how do you navigate the wild terrain of tax deductions and accounting intricacies in the cannabis industry, the way the gray regulatory uh, market is predicting it to be. Yeah. We, um, Eric, do you want me to answer this or are you? <laughs> yeah, this is all you did. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I difficult it is there. <laughs> <laughs> Set a double check. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what, growing, you know, hemp, we, uh, we, 280E doesn't apply, right. so that's right. That's a a huge, huge break for us there until politicians screw it up. Um, but I mean, just little things that we're doing, making sure our, you know, assets are logged correctly for depreciation purposes. You know, yep. we're doing R and D credits from a federal perspective. Mm -hmm. We're working on some, you know, other creative things as much as you can be creative with the tax code to mm -hmm. to make sure that we're we're maximizing our deductions and, and minimizing our revenue that we report yeah absolutely and inventory counts monthly and support you know make sure you provide that to your financial provider all that kind of stuff is always mm -hmm. good i know one of the big things that always comes up when we deal with uh cultivations is uh waste management and trying to deal uh with the cost of that and and make sure that that's not a big issue right you know so uh right. I mean, you know, we we've kind of heard a little bit of it all. I know with some of our clients, we 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 find find the best ways possible to actually, you know, uh, make sure that they have the best savings in our team. Curious. So, um, and I don't, I know Tennessee is is similar to Texas, where it's like you feel like you're probably gonna be like one of the last states to legalize. <laughs> that, that, that's exactly how we feel. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, 
are y'all looking to position yourself so whenever because uh, I'm not sure about the medicinal market. Do y'all do y'all have a medicinal market at all? No, not at all. Okay, so yeah. are you, are you looking to position yourself so, let's say, uh, uh, cannabis is is rescheduled to let's say a uh, uh, schedule three, right? Because that's big talk right now. Yeah, that's that's all over. That's all over the the news and everything like mm-hmm. that, right? Are you looking to position yourself to be able to capitalize? On transitioning into the, the the medical side, or what's what's your take on that? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, but at the same time, we've built this business in the hemp industry, so I could see it somehow if it got uh, rescheduled to maybe combine the two. That would be mm-hmm. what I would really hope to do. But yeah, either way, we still always do CBD products because that's what we believe in, and uh, that's what we're all about. So. That's a but, that's a great answer. That's yeah. a great answer because that's uh, keeping it simple, stupid. <laughs> it's like, look, I, I I know all these changes are happening, but this is this is our wheelhouse right here. We, we and, this- and yeah, and I would imagine too for you guys that you see things in the news all the time, right? Like you guys, you know, you guys on social media, you guys talk to people in in you know just around in the right. community and stuff like that. There's always some kind of buzz about hearsay. What's going on? Oh, hey, oh, do you know they're legalizing cocaine next month? And you'd be like, <laughs> like what? You know, like it's like all these crazy, like, and you're like, where did you hear that? But the thing is, I, I, I tell my daughter all the time because she likes, she's 10 now, and now she's like, she's Googling stuff. And I'm like, be careful Googling. Because I, <laughs> like I tell my 10 year old, I tell to a grown adult, you can believe anything and back it up with at least 10 links on Google. You got to be careful. So I, I definitely rock with you guys. And like you said, you know, mm-hmm. the, the KISS method, right? Mm-hmm. Um, as yeah. far as just stick to what you know. Don't get too creative and bring in a bunch of ideas that's not prove, uh, proven and tried. And, and you know, just do what you know how to do. You know, you don't have time to just believe and shift your whole business based off the tabloids. Right, right. Now, yeah, that- and uh, kind of support what, what Eric had said, guys, is, you know, the uh, <clears throat> the recreation of medicinal market, depending on which state you're in, it's it's kind of, excuse my French, but it's kind of bullshit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, when you oh, get yeah. a medicinal market, you got recreational smokers going there, and they're going there because they don't have a recreational option, so they're not using it for medicine, which is right. fine if you want to use it recreationally. Yeah. I do, and I use the medicinal and all that, but, like, the flowers that Eric grows – and that Eric started and created in the industry, those are those one to ones. That so it's half THCA, half CBD percentage. Mm. Like you can't tell me that that's not more medicinal than a THC only product. You got the you got multiple cannabinoids in there, more than two, in a lot of examples for what he grows, and that's a true medicinal. That's a true medicinal product that should be in those medical dispensaries, and maybe you'll find one. You know, one option if you go into dispensary, most times you won't find find any one to ones. Mm-hmm, right. So we get a medicinal market here in Tennessee. Our plan is to educate the government how a lot of the states are doing it wrong, why they've done it wrong, mm. and why we can actually create a legitimate medicinal market. Yeah, exactly. Right. No, that's real. Fire. That no, that that is true. A lot of people, you know, have that that issue where they talk about like it not re- really being a like a medicinal benefit to what you're finding through the the medicinal program. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about, we had like someone drop like a comment um, when we did the Texas uh, marijuana March. Okay. Yeah. That one, when we did that one, there's somebody dropped a comment under and then they were saying, Oh, let's, let's be real. It's not, we're not um, trying to smoke it for the medicinal purposes and you know, and, but it's, that's just what it was. Texas rolled out this uh, teacup, thing right and Texas compassionate use program right and they rolled out uh the teacup uh the program itself to say that we aren't completely against cannabis and to to me I think it's really just to kind of simmer the noise down simmer the crowd mm-hmm. a little bit while they drag their feet a little bit longer mm-hmm. you know and I think that sucks but now the people that are trying to take advantage of it they don't believe those people actually need it for medicinal benefits and that's rough mm-hmm. but Hey, it might be true. It's like it's like on the other hand, it, it just might be true because but that's what happens when you starve out an entire 
like how many what's our population in Texas now? Like you know, like five countries. <laughs> five. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you start you starving everybody, and everybody's tired of getting locked up on like some bull, some oh, I'll say it, some bullshit um like charges, mm-hmm. some nonviolent uh issues. <laughs> now, I know what one thing that's going on right now in Texas uh that we talk about on this word on the street. Uh, was Decrim Dallas. So like uh, DecrimDallas.com, they actually, in, uh, Ground Game Texas is the name of the mm. organization. Mm-hmm. They're paired with uh, Texas Cannabis Collective. Okay. And they are actually uh, collecting 20,000 signatures right now so they could decriminalize uh, marijuana wow. in Dallas. And that's how we really are trying to shift, like trying to, that's where we're dropping the the giant bomb there right. to kind of create the waves that spread throughout the state is doing it by city, right. you know, and it, it's kind of <clears throat> rough, man. But that's that's what that's the war that they're forcing on the people mm-hmm. because of this. So it's kind of crazy. Yeah, that's like, hey, yeah. We- I don't know if y'all know who James Loud is. It's one of the uh, breeders that Eric uses a bunch of his cultivars and his cross above them. But somebody came on his podcast, I think it was last week, mm-hmm. and I don't know how many years he's been in jail, but he was put in solitary confinement for 75 days Damn. because he tested positive for cannabis while while he was in prison. Hey, everybody, everybody smokes cannabis in prison. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 what? what? They Wait, just make what? it mandatory. Yeah, <laughs> you like, don't you want them to like not? You know, you want these happy guys that's not walking around just stabbing each other up and everything. Like, <laughs> hey man, that's wild. <laughs> hey, hey, this this man uh, uh, got high before he went into prison, <laughs> and, then, and then they tested and him then like they three, tested days him three days later. <laughs> and he popped hot. <laughs> oh hell no! You. <laughs> No, that's, uh, that's crazy. That's wild. That's wild. Well, gentlemen, quick question. So, you know, as as business owners, we understand. I mean, you get in the flow of everything, the flow gardens of everything, <laughs> <laughs> and you're, right, and you're you're just focused on. Uh, okay, we need to improve this. The metrics, analytics. Okay, this, 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 and this. What do y'all do to have fun or to keep it fun for yourselves so that when you approach the next day or look forward, um, um, you, you have some type of aspiration to, to go towards? Uh, I mean, quite honestly, this isn't a job for me. It's my passion. I love it. So every day Man. is like Christmas. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I've, I'm constantly popping new seeds and looking for new plants, uh, looking for golden eggs. And so when I'm pheno hunting, I'm so excited every single day to get up there and and look at the plants because they change day by day. Yeah. So for me, that that keeps it super interesting. It it never it's never gonna get old. I've done it 30 years, and I, I'm still like a little kid when I go in the grow rooms. <laughs> and Eric, where's that where does that passion come from? Because I know you don't just wake up with something like that's a lot of people that fake it. But where does yours <laughs> actually come from? I don't. You know, I don't really know. I just know that I've always taken a liking to it. Like when I was. I guess the first time I ever grew a plant out, and this is a long time ago, and uh, smoked it, got high, and I was like, wow. It was like a light bulb went out off of my head. <laughs> I was like, I just did this for free. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> this plant. And right. from there, I just never stopped. Like, I first started growing when I was 17 in my parents' crawl space mm. until they busted me. And I just <laughs> never stopped. I just kept growing. I've grown in attics, crawl spaces, basements. And they, they gave you 75 days, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Eric, tell, tell them how you got busted, though. Oh, how I would love to hear that. Uh, from, by my your, parents? from your mom, how she found out. <laughs> oh, my sister ratted me out. Oh. oh. Where you drilled the hole. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I drilled the hole behind the uh, china hutch in the dining room. <laughs> and my father thought it was my brother because he didn't think I was smart enough. To, to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he did it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it was my brother. <laughs> but, yeah, I had like a brute trash can with aluminum foil lined in it and a fluorescent light. 
had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> I just know I liked it. And what do your parents uh, say now? Like, what's the over like from your 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 family in general? Like, what do they think about you now and the success that you've become because of uh, what the work that you put in? Um, I'm, they're definitely really proud. My mom actually works in the packaging room. And oh, has oh like that's dope. Years. Yeah. So, and then my sister works at our other facility, so she runs. You that. put the family so on. Definitely a family business, but yes. Yeah, my mom couldn't be more proud. She'd tell you time and time again. <laughs> that's dope, man. And it is, it is dope. See, that's a real place where mm-hmm. the passion for the flower actually comes from. Mm-hmm. Uh, David, where does your uh, passion for what you guys do actually stem from? So I'm not as smart as Eric. <laughs> it took me like it took me 20 years of doing something I didn't love <laughs> to figure out this is this is what I need to do. So when I sold my business, yeah. I was like. I need to live a purpose-driven life. I've just been mm. focused on making money and mm-hmm. running a business that I was good at. So I, you know, I just took a hard look at myself, and you know, cannabis is is where I went. So for me, it's just living a purpose-driven life. Like Eric said, every day you wake up and it's it's like Christmas in a sense. And mm-hmm. it's not the everyday craze when you walk in, when you see new employees walk in and it's their first day. You know that that kind of dies down a little bit because you do got to run a business, but mm-hmm. right, you know. Oh, and this place is actually helping people's health and happiness is is what does it for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Being, yeah. A, being a game changer. Yeah. That, and <clears throat> Jarell and I, as we've traveled across the U.S. talking to people in the cannabis industry, um, I mean, all the stories that we've heard of how this plant has performed, quote unquote, miracles, the, the people that have had cancer that they've gone to the doctor and they said that, Hey man, the doctors gave up on me. I was, and, and I just stopped taking all the medicine and I started taking the plant. And after, you know, a certain amount of time, my ailments, I started getting better or, you know, I, I I was cancer free or, and not saying that everything, all there are people that are out there that have these stories that just like, this is my personal testimony that the plant has saved my life. And we, we couldn't get out of here without, you know, giving you guys the floor to, you know, uh, let let the people know about any game-changing uh, things that you guys have on the agenda. You know, a lot of people or have a lot of big plans, and I'm sure you guys have a lot on your docket that you might have been quiet about before, but we're going to see if we can peel back the veil a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. So um, something that not many people know that we're doing right now uh, I've been working on breeding seeds for the last couple of years, and we have a big seed line uh, that we're going to introduce on our website in the next month or so. And then to tag along with that, we're also going to be selling genetic cuts of our, all of our different cultivars on the website as well. So okay. if you like a certain genetic, we can sell you the plant to grow it yourself. Mm. So. Wow. That's big. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. You know what? <clears throat> for the non, non-science non people out there, what is a genetic cut? So it's just a branch <laughs> off of a, a plant. So when once it roots, it's just a genetic replica of that plant. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's real, man. That's that is big news though. And you and you mean like I guess you're saying direct to, you know, B to C, B to B. What's the what's the plan for that? Uh B to C, yeah. B, that's awesome. Yeah, you'll be able to go on our website and order seeds or clones. And we'll ship them straight to your door. That's so um, dope. So the, the little Eric's of the world, right? That that are like, <laughs> that are like, hey man, I'll do the seventy five days. I don't care, bro. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like, let, let me get that. Let me go ahead and you know get that genetic, get that in there, and uh, I'm about to get started on my journey so I can have my own flow gardens one day. Like that. That's major, man. So you know, and where's that? Uh, can you guys shout out your socials and your website where they can go check out and. And cop that that those genetics and everything. Of course, yeah. You uh, go to our website is flowgardens.com and our social. Uh, we've got a Facebook flowgardens uh, underscore four twenty, and then our Instagram is flowgardens underscore four twenty two point zero. Since we keep getting deleted, we have to keep adding things to it. Oh yeah, you know that. <laughs> you know that's just part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, yeah, man. Um, well, we just want to thank y'all, man. Mm-hmm. David and Eric, man, y'all, y'all are uh, y'all are trailblazing yep. in what you guys do. We were so excited just to have this conversation with you guys, and appreciate you guys spreading that good energy. It's, it's, so it's definitely all can of love from the can of bros mm-hmm. from Texas to Tennessee. We appreciate you guys, man. If you ever need anything from us at all. Hey, hit us up. You know, is is you know, let's let's make sure that we do it like family, so we can take the plant to the next level. Yes, sir. And I love it. Thank you all for having us on here. Thanks, man. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, man, and best of luck in twenty twenty four with the business. You too. Thank you so much. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Here to give you knowledge that you didn't know. Put you on some game. Now you got a buzz. You are now listening to Canada Bros.